Hey there and welcome to the latest episode of the Mind Body Health Podcast with myself, Dave Sheehan, high performance consultant and dedicated now for over 25 years to educating, motivating and hopefully inspiring people just like you in leading the best life you can be to evolve into the best version of yourself and look to have everything you desire in life. Because the great thing is, the wonderful thing about life is you can have everything you want in life, but it takes work, it takes consistency, it takes focus, it takes having a clear vision in your head of what you want and then importantly having self-belief that you can get there and as i said consistency is everything and patience so on this podcast that's what my body had health podcast is all about helping you to help yourself by giving you the tools and strategies and the education and inspiration to go out there and live your best life but remember knowledge is not power it's the implementation of knowledge is power so everything that's shared in this particular podcast will have a dramatic and positive impact on your life, but only, only if you implement it. That is the absolute key. So in this particular episode, episode I want to revisit one of our earlier pod, earliest podcasts. I think it might have been only number four or five or something like that. That has been probably one of our most popular ones, most impactful ones, and it's to do with sleep. Because sleep is an area that most people really, really struggle with. Like, tell me this, how well do you sleep? Like starting off, do you find it easy to get to sleep? Do you even have a sleep routine? Do you have a set bedtime and a set waking time? Do you fall asleep at that time nearly automatically? Do you wake up at that time automatically? You know, do you have that routine? Do you go to bed at erratic hours? Do you wake up at erratic hours? Do you feel sleepy going to, to bed? Do you fall asleep within seconds of the lights going out? Or are you kind of lying there tossing and turning? Do you wake up during the night? Do you very disturbed night sleep in terms of dreams as well as the waking up side of things do you wake up feeling fresh in the morning or do you wake up feeling like christ did i get any sleep at all you know what way do you feel and then do you realize how all of that impacts your entire day it impacts where your brain works impacts your focus concentration your memory your mood importantly all of these things are impacted by sleep sleep is absolutely crucial and there's many different reasons why people have terrible sleep and why that then has such a negative impact on their days and their lives as a whole and it has such a huge impact like people have no idea just how important sleep is sleep is truly the most important aspect of the whole process of living your best life and living optimally and experiencing great health and energy and brain function and longevity and all these different things it is so, so important. Why? Because it's when we regenerate. It's when our body rejuvenates its cells. And one big thing that I'll start on is we live now in a very sedentary world. And we live in a very, very sedentary world where people are sitting down most of the time. They are get out of bed eventually, sit down, have something to eat, or they go straight into their car with a cup of coffee. They sit down at work for most jobs nowadays, and then they come home and sit down and watch TV. There's very little activity. So many people are not active in terms of going to the gym, doing workouts, doing group exercise, going for runs, doing home workouts, whatever it might be, doing sports, people have become very inactive. And that's a reason why sometimes people find it hard to go to sleep. Because remember, sleep is about regeneration, rejuvenation. Now, if during the day you haven't really expended your body, you haven't really physically used up your body, you haven't burnt many calories, you haven't got in a lot of steps, you haven't moved around, the body doesn't need that much sleep. And that can be a big reason why you can't get to sleep. You know what I mean? So if you take before 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, when people had to walk everywhere, cycle everywhere, everyone played sports, people lived healthier lives, people moved and did stuff and walked places and cycled places versus nearly driving in the door. People were doing more physical manual jobs than there are right now. People expended energy and they were tired. Now, not so tired. So many people can stay up so late. And to say, I can't get to sleep. I'm not even tired. It's because you're not expending much energy. And that's not good because your body needs to sleep to regenerate and rejuvenate. And it needs a certain amount of sleep. And if you're not expending enough energy to make it tired, that's not good either. Because it's going to shorten your sleeping period, period, which is going to have a big impact on everything else. But the reason you're not tired is because of that. Like think of the days when, you know, if you've had a very exertive day, maybe you've done lots of gardening, maybe you did an event, you ran a marathon or something, or maybe you've got a very physical job and a very physical day. Think as well when you're sick. Think of when you have a little bit of a cold or flu or just not well. What do you feel? You feel tired, don't you? Because the body wants to go to sleep. It wants to regenerate, rejuvenate. It wants to heal itself. 
And that's what the body is doing when you're asleep. So this is why it's so important. And if you're not getting consistently good quality sleep, and quality is the key. Quantity has a little bit of importance, but quality is far more important because there's so many people out there who sleep 8, 10, 12 hours a night even, and they still feel tired all the time. How can that be? Well, it's again down to the bigger picture. It's not just about the quality, quantity. It's more important about the quality. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. So one simple thing to start with is get more active. Make your body be more tired, tired. Make your body need sleep more. Like, do you track your steps? Like, I'll guarantee that the vast majority of you who listen to this will be absolutely shocked at the number of steps you take each day. I bet you'll be so little. Like, 10,000 steps a day should be the baseline for everybody. Like, 10,000 steps a day isn't even that much. It's not that much walking. Like, it's literally, if I walked into town and back from here, which would be about maybe 40 minutes, 45 minutes total, that'd be nearly 10,000 steps. Now, that's not much activity in an entire day. So, you know, track your steps, see what it's like, and then start upping it. Because that's showing your general basic activity, apart from, you know, when you're exercising. You know, so that's basic activity. And most people are only hitting two. I've had clients where I've gotten to do this, and they're doing two, 3,000 steps a day. Two or 3,000, that's barely moving. So, of course, they're not tired at night. Of course, the body doesn't need to rejuvenate the way it needs to. But that then is having an impact on everything else. Because like I said, if you're not getting enough sleep, not enough quality sleep, it impacts your brain function. In fact, impacts your focus, concentration, memory, and importantly, mood and energy. And your mood and energy determine a lot of what you do each day. Like if you're not feeling in the right mood and the right form, if you don't have that kind of oomph, if you don't have that motivation, if um, you don't have the energy, it's a struggle to do things and keep pushing on and keep pushing on towards your goals and do the things that are necessary. And for most people, they'll buckle with that and they won't do anything because they just don't feel like it. And that's what happens. So we need to make sure our brain is functioning right. Remember, your mind, your brain is the control tower. You need to take care of it. You need to make sure it's healthy. You need to be, make sure it's operating at its optimal level. And your sleep is a huge part of this. Okay? So that's the first thing. Become more active. Simple. You know, get out there, be more active, track your steps. I really encourage you to track your steps. Something I even do now, because even though I lead a fairly active life, my steps even weren't anywhere near what I expected. I know it happened by chance I even checked them because I was part of a charity challenge where we did track our steps and let, let the organizers know the steps because it was a challenge which is all about the number of steps and accumulating a certain number of steps between a group and raising money and stuff like that. And I was quite surprised at how little my steps were compared to what I would have expected. And I'm very active compared to most people. So track your steps, get more active, walk places, don't drive into bloody door shops, park a little bit away. Even if you're in a car park, park away from the door and walk to the door. Take stairs, take, walk the stairs, don't take the, the lifts, escalators. If you're even on these escalators or travelator things in the airports, walk on them. Don't just stand on them. Simple things like that, they all matter. But be conscious kind of walking around, okay? Because we need to tire ourselves out. It's like a baby. And a baby's like moving and crying and growing and trying different things and trying to walk and all this kind of stuff. And it's lights out. The baby falls asleep, it's gone. It ain't waking up because it needs to sleep. And that's why babies sleep so much during the day because uh, and during the night. Because for a few hours every day, in every 24-hour cycle, they are active. Their brain is active. You know, they're constantly growing and developing and that's tiring for them. Okay. So that's number one. What you eat is so important. The kind of schedule you have before bed is really important. Caffeine is something that's become a part of modern life. Okay. People now drink coffee like it's water. It's just become normal. It's become people's breakfast, which is not good to stay in the bed very late and just barely get out of bed, grabbing a coffee or getting in the habit of having coffee just first thing. And then you don't feel hungry because your body's not looking for the food because your body will get used to whatever you make it do. That is good and bad. So if you're making it do bad things, it will get used to it. If you make it do good things, it will get used to it. Your body adapts very quickly, even within just a week. So there's so many people that coffee is literally their breakfast. And that is not a good breakfast. And then coffee has become a crutch. So coffee is like that thing that gives them the energy when they don't have energy, but it's short lived. And then you get a crash and then you want more coffee. And that's why there's people out there who are drinking 10 cups of coffee a day. Now, what's really important is that you don't drink coffee for minimum eight hours before you go to bed, even 10, the longer the better, even before midday. Try keep your coffee before midday because you know, the caffeine in it will just keep your adrenal glands booming. It'll keep your mind going. It's just, it, it keeps you alert and awake. And that is not good for you. 
this is why I'm not a fan of coffee. I rarely ever drink coffee. I'll have it occasionally if I'm out, but it's not something I would do regularly, a couple of times a year, really. Because while I like, it's nice when I have it, it's not good in terms of its overall impact. But if you drink coffee, make sure it's you know, 8, 10, 12 hours before you're going to turn the lights out, okay? Because otherwise it will impact your sleep. Now, there's people out there who say, oh, I drink coffee throughout the day and I drink coffee at night after my dinner and it doesn't affect me. No, it does affect you. But what's happened is it has now become normal. Your body has adapt to, adapted to it. So while you might go to sleep, it still have a negative impacts in your body. It's like when people can drink five, 10 drinks of alcohol and they're not getting drunk and they think, oh, I just don't get drunk. No, your body's adapted to it. And it's actually should be scary for you that you can drink so much and the body isn't getting drunk. Whereas someone who rarely drinks like myself, I can have one drink even halfway through. I'm starting to feel a bit merry. So we need to start realizing it's like people who eat really shitty food, all fast food and processed food and terrible foods, high fat foods and say, I feel fine. I don't feel low energy. I feel OK. No, that's just become normal. You feel normal in your normal. But if you actually had healthy, you'd feel like Superman or Superwoman. So our body adapts to things. So what you feel isn't necessarily good or optimal. What you're feeling is your normal. And if you're doing wrong things, then you're not even operating at a fraction of your potential. Does that make sense? Like people who say, oh, I only sleep four or five hours a night. I don't need more sleep. If you slept seven or eight hours sleep, proper quality sleep, you would be operating at a much higher level. Same if you drink more water, same if you drink less caffeine or energy drinks or sugar drinks, same as if you eat healthier, same as you eat more plant-based food, same if you exercise more, same if you do meditation, same if you have less stress. All these things will lead you to live a more optimal life, okay, and feeling much better within yourself. So we need to stop convincing ourselves that we're feeling good and we're fine and we don't need to live healthier lives. We do. If you want to live optimally and if you want longevity, if you want to fight disease, because all these negative things that people are doing, again, all these things around sleep, like I'm talking about, they are creating disease because you're making your body it, like a vessel that is not healthy. And then that triggers cells cells to become bad cells like cancer. We all have cancer, but it depends whether you trigger cancer cells or not. We all have an immune system. If your immune system isn't strong and sleep and has a huge impact on your immune system, if your immune system is too weak, then every kind of cold virus, every kind of thing is going to get in. Okay. This is why people are healthy. They rarely get sick. And if they do, they recover fast. People live unhealthy lives, then they're getting sick all the time and diseases and all kinds of stuff, okay? So this is where we have to take personal responsibility for our existence, basically, in every single way. So eight, 10 hours before sleep, you should be not consuming any form of ca caffeine. Let me talk about more liquids, alcohol. Alcohol, again, something in the last 10, 20 years has become normal for people to have at nighttime. You know, especially among women I've seen in that the day's over, whether it be work, kids or both, it's like, oh, the day's over, I deserve a glass of wine. In one way, true, you deserve like a little bit of chill out time for you too, yeah, but on the bad side, it's a bad, bad habit. Why is that? Because alcohol is the worst thing for sleep, okay? Alcohol is the worst thing overall in its impact. Now, I'm not saying don't drink alcohol. I would never say that to anybody. I never tell people don't. Do anything. There's a couple things I'd say to cut out all of this, which would be McDonald's, Coke, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and Pringles. And there'd be a few other things too, but there are three things I always point out. Never consume them. They are so, so bad. I would never say about alcohol because it's a part of a life and it's nice and it's fun and it's good to have every so often. I enjoy having alcohol every so often. While it might be rare, but I do enjoy it when I do have it. But what you have to be aware of is once you've any alcohol in your system, it impacts your sleep. So if you at nighttime having one glass of wine or one half a beer or one shot or one brandy or whiskey or whatever, it's going to impact your sleep because it stops you going into REM mode, which is rapid eye movement, which is a deep phase of sleep. So when you have alcohol in your system, you can't go into deep sleep. And if you don't go into deep sleep, then you're not going, in, going into the most restorative phase of the sleep cycle. And we have a sleep cycle from dozing off to really, really deep to coming back out of it again. And they all last an hour 15 to hour 45 eat these cycles if you're going through them if you're getting proper sleep and we need three or four of them a night most people don't even get one most people don't even get a half they don't even get to REM sleep because of these type of things i'm explaining to you okay hope this makes sense and remember if you've questions about anything that i say on this podcast or any podcast make sure you contact me directly with your questions on email on the contact form on the website on any social media i want your questions i want to clarify these things because it's important for you to understand what works, what doesn't work, so you can live your best life, okay, and live optimally. 
So alcohol stopped you getting to deep REM sleep. Okay, so that's a killer. So you could sleep 10 hours, but if you've had alcohol, you ain't sleeping right. And that's why the next morning after alcohol, you always feel tired. Doesn't matter how little you had, you always feel tired. And then dehydration's on top of that too as well. That then is affecting your brain function. Alcohol kills brain cells. That's a fact. So your brain is a bit foggier the next day as well. Your focus, concentration, mood, everything. Mood's affected. Mood's going to impact your entire day if you're not in the right mood. Okay, does that make sense? So alcohol. If you're going to have some alcohol, have it way before early in the day, <laughs> lunchtime if you're going to have to. Or look, if you're going to have a drink, just be aware of its impact and do all the other things to limit the negative impact alcohol has. Okay, because you're going to have nights, you're going to have a drink, whether you feel like it, you're on social occasions, you friends over, whatever, but just be aware of the impact of it. Just like the coffee. I'm not saying you never, ever, ever have coffee again after 12 o'clock. I'm sure you will, but at least keep it to a rare occasion, same as the alcohol. Okay, so that's important. Um, within a few hours, stop doing any kind of work stuff. A few hours before bed, you know, get away from work stuff, get away from stimulation. You know, you need to press stop on your day. It's very important you press stop on your day so that, you know, you can focus instead of relaxing, relaxing your mind, your mind can switch off, your mind can wind down. Because if your mind is go, 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 concentrate and focusing on certain things like work or projects or stress or worry or upset or any of these kind of things, anxiety, about stuff on the next day or the following days, then again, you won't get sleep. You might fall asleep, you look asleep, but you're having very disturbed sleep, just like disturbed dreams. So if you think of a stressful, emotional, upsetting time in your life, anxious time in your life, think of all the dreams you have. They're not just normal, fun dreams, are they? They're fairly disturbed. They're really kind of out there. They make no sense. They're just kind of crazy. That's showing a disturbed mind, okay? And you won't get good sleep when that's what you're doing in your sleep, okay? So relax and switch off from work and all that a good few hours before bed. Make sure with food, you eat your last bit of food, minimum three hours before lights out, ideally even four or five. Because you know when you eat, the body has to digest the food. When you go to sleep, it can't be digesting, it can't be sleeping. You know, it's focused on restoration, rejuvenation. That's what your body is trying to do when it's asleep. So what you need to do instead is you need to eat three, four, five hours before lights out and give the body a chance to digest the food. And then once that's digested, then you should have a better sleep. Think about times that you eat close to bed, you know, within half an hour, an hour, two hours, even a big meal, especially, you know, you find it hard to get to sleep and then you typically will have a disturbed sleep and weird dreams and all this kind of stuff. So it's very important not eat for a few hours before bed, minimum three, ideally up to about five. Okay. For one hour before bed, no technology whatsoever, no blue light, no phones, no iPads, no laptops, no uh, tablets, no TVs, None of that kind of stuff, because all that light, it affects your brain. It keeps it alert. So it's very important for you to you know, wind down your brain, basically. Do things like you know, reading, meditation, breathing exercises, have a bath, have a shower, do some stretching or yoga, listen to soothing music, meditate. Do these things that will relax you. you need at night for the last hour, ideally, but at minimum, bare minimum, 15 minutes if you're not used to this kind of lifestyle. But from 15 minutes an hour before bed, completely stop everything that's stimulating. And that includes TVs, everything. People will watch TV or iPads and all this kind of stuff to relax before bed. And yes, it relaxes you to a degree, but the light is making your brain continue. So even if you fall asleep watching something, your brain's going 100 miles per hour, which means, again, you're not going to get proper sleep. So you have to get proper sleep, okay? So stay away from all devices and lights for ideally up to an hour before bed and do stuff that's relaxing, okay? Very important thing, your phone. Do you use your phone as an alarm? 99% of people with a smartphone these days do. It is killing your sleep. Even if you do everything else I say, if your phone is your alarm and it's on your bedside locker, it is killing your sleep. Why is that? Because the phone is constantly transmitting radiation. OK, so that's one thing. So that's keeping your mind active because it's triggering your mind to keep moving. OK, also, most people have notifications turned on on their phones for all the different apps and stuff. Even if you have the phone on silent, every time notifications coming in, it's like a ping. You may not be hearing, it, but it's a pulse of radiation. That's a pulse of radiation into your mind, into your brain. OK, again, another trigger. Most people charge their phone at night. So they have it beside their head and they're charging it. It's electromagnetic frequency pumping into your phone. That's, again, all in your environment. Again, it's all within a foot or two of your head, okay, in your mind and your brain. It's just keeping it active, okay? So it's killing your sleep from that perspective. Again, if I walk into everyone's room tonight, bed, they're into their bedroom, everyone looks asleep, 
but they're not asleep. And it doesn't matter if they sleep for 10, 12, 15 hours. If that phone is beside their head, they are not getting quality sleep. They will not get this deep sleep. They will not get restorative sleep. They will wake up tired. They will have no energy. They will have low mood. It will impact them negatively. And it released lots of cortisol. And cortisol is not a hormone you want to be releasing to your body. It stores fat cells. It just has such a negative impact on all of us. It's like when we're stressed, we release cortisol as well. So, you know, when our body is, you know, not doing what it's supposed to do, it releases cortisol, basically. And it's something you want to limit the, the release of. So phones, turn them off. Get a battery alarm clock. Buy a battery alarm clock for five quid or 10 quid. Use that. That's what I use, a small battery alarm clock. And that's what wakes me up. And I don't even need it. You know, when you get to a stage where your sleep is, you know, you really nail it in terms of your sleep routines, you will fall asleep within seconds of the lights going out and you will wake up before the alarm. Like it is rare I ever need my alarm. Like in the last 20 years, I'd say I've needed my alarm two or three times. That's a lot of, lot of mornings I've not lead, needed the alarm. I said as a safety net, just in case. And the times I've needed the alarms have been stressful times in my life when I'm not getting proper sleep. So I might be sleeping, but I'm waking up a lot, getting crazy dreams. And, you know, I'm not getting proper sleep. So the alarm actually wakes me up at the time I need it because otherwise I wouldn't wake up. When I'm in a better state, I'm waking up a couple of minutes before the alarm. I fall asleep pretty quickly before the alarm or before um, lights out or after lights out, sorry because my body is used to that. We have to get our bodies trained to do the things that are right, just like the body will be trained easily to do the things that are wrong. Does that make sense? So your phone, get rid of it. Get a battery alarm clock. If you really, really feel you need your phone on, put it out in the landing. You know, put it in the kitchen. Put it as far away from you as you can. Like how often would you get a call on a phone that's that urgent? It's going to be pretty rare, right? But some people really, really want it just in case. If you do, at least have it out in the landing or something like that. Have it far away from you, okay? Simple things then like your, your room, make sure your room's comfortable, make sure your bed's comfortable, make sure it's not too warm, it's not too cold, make sure you got a good mattress because it's important even for your back and your whole body structure. Make sure your room's like a back cave. We react to light and dark, okay? We react to light and dark. So it's very important for you to make sure your room is absolutely pitch dark. Have blackout curtains, you know, have a few blinds or at least have like eye shades on, something that makes it pitch dark because our body reacts to that. And, you know, it's like go back to caveman times when the sun was coming up and light was coming in through the cave. That's when the new day to get up. When it was pitch dark at night, that's when we knew to go to sleep. Simple. We react. That's why in winter times when it's dull and dreary and cloudy and wet and dark, we feel tired. Even at 4 30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, we're feeling tired because it's dark. Just like at 8 o'clock in the morning, it's still dark. We're still tired. Where you take the summer, it's bright at 5 o'clock in the morning, if even earlier, and it's dark at 11 o'clock at night. We don't feel tired within that time. You know, again, if you're operating optimally, if you're living a bad life, of course, you're tired all the time. But I'm talking about in general, in terms of reacting to light and dark. So it makes a huge difference to, to make sure the room is absolutely pitch dark. Okay. And so like in the morning, let the light gradually, you know, come in. You know, whether it be of a little light that's not too bright or open the curtains gradually, or you have one of these devices that kind of gradually brighten up the room. That's a good idea as well. So, you know, we have to create positive association with the bedroom as well. Like don't be doing work in the bedroom. Don't be studying the bedroom. Don't be watching stuff in the bedroom, even ideally. Keep all that to like a living room, lounge, so on. You want to, when you go into your bedroom, your brain automatically goes, oh, start releasing melatonin. Must be time to go to sleep. Like the bedroom should be basically sleep and sex. That's it. Like that's what the bedroom should be for. And you have that association with it. So basically, as I said, like you're literally going to bed, you're going to, towards the bedroom or into the bedroom and the brain is going, okay, it must be time to go to sleep and release melatonin. It's so different in the pre-sleep routine. Like I was saying, reading or meditating or stretching or bath shower, you know, any of these things, if you're doing them before bed, the body should start releasing melatonin automatically because it recognizes the association between the activity you're doing and the fact that you must be going to sleep soon. Does that make sense? So look, the bottom line is if you implement this, these things that I've gone through, I can guarantee you 100% you will have your best sleep tonight, best sleep of your life potentially. And if you keep doing them consistently, it will have such a positive impact on your life in every way because our brain function and our moods and our energy determines a lot of what we do in our waking time. And if we're in bad mood and feeling down and low because of poor sleep, which will happen, it will be an impact, or we've low energy, we've low motivation, we're not going to be operating at our best throughout the day. We're not going to feel our best and we're not going to do our best. 
and our life can will not be what it could potentially be because you have to potentially do anything in life you have to potentially be whatever you want and every day should be evolving into the best version of yourself and implement these kind of strategies will sort out your sleep area and that has a huge impact on everything else your food choices your exercise choices where your mind works your motivation your psychology your lifestyle habits, your ability to be productive and prioritize all these different things that you do in your waking time, sleep will impact it. So I hope what I've shared has made sense. I do my best to always explain a why behind everything that I say, because it's important to not just tell you do stuff. If you understand the why, you're more likely to do it. Okay. So as I said, if you have any questions, about it, then let me know. I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave a rating review if you did. Share it out there far and wide. You know, the Mind Body Health podcast is for you. I do this for you to educate, motivate, and hopefully inspire you. So make use of it. Listen to previous episodes. Share these episodes out there with people you feel it would help. Rate and review, all this kind of stuff. And keep sending me your suggestions of topics you'd like me to cover, questions you'd like me to address, and guests you'd like me to have on. All these different things. So from Dave Sheen here, High Performance Consultant, and the Mind Body Health podcast, have a good one. Keep focused and implement what I said and have the best sleep ever.